Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome to my first ever real-time illustration on YouTube. So uh, this piece that I'm going to be making today is part of my Inktober series, which you can follow along with on Instagram. Uh, if you're not already following me there, I'm at Kendall Hilligus and I had already posted this piece as a one minute video earlier this week and asked you guys uh, which one of this week's uh, videos you wanted to see real time and uh, this one was the pick. So uh, if you already follow me on Instagram, you know that I'm doing all 31 pieces for Inktober in 30 minutes or less, or at least I'm trying to do them in 30 minutes or less. Uh, and up until now, the fastest piece that I've ever created was really more like around the three hour range. So this is a, a much faster style and definitely a departure from what I usually do. But um, that is what has made it possible for me to do Inktober and what's made it possible for me to create a real-time video for you guys since uh, nobody wants to see a three hour long uh, process uh, or at least I don't want to edit a three hour long process. Uh, all right so real quick before we dive in I want to mention the other thing that has made this video possible and that is my patrons. I don't have any corporate sponsors but my patrons support these videos and make them possible so uh, thank you thank you to all of them and especially to my newest patrons Nikki D and Elowen. Uh, if you want to support my channel and make it possible for me to create more videos, please check out patreon.com backslash Kendall Hilligus, and I will have it linked in the description box as well. Okay, so let's get to it. Okay, so today, as requested, I'm doing a full review of the Arteza Real Brush Pens. Uh, these were sent to me uh, for free by Arteza a few months ago, and I had played around with them here and there, but hadn't really done anything serious with them. So um, that's why I decided, that's one of the reasons I decided to use them for Inktober, because a lot of you had been asking me what I thought, and I wanted to be able to give them a, a really thorough go around before, um, before answering you. So um, it's still early on in the month, but I have been using them a lot. And uh, I have the 48 color set. There's, I think a 24 color, 48, and then a 96. So I have the 48 color set. And overall, I would say uh, they've been really easy to use so far. That's a big positive for me. Um, very easy, very quick, minimal cleanup. Uh, definitely uh, simpler in some ways than watercolor. I'll get into that in more detail later. Um, and there are several ways to use them. Um, one of them is to just obviously use it direct from the pen at full concentration. Uh, you can also dip the tip of the pen in water to kind of water it down a little bit. And uh, some of you have told me that you uh, like to add water afterwards while the pen is still wet once it's on the paper. And I've tried that. Personally, I'm not a big fan of that approach, but that is, um, that is something that some of you do and that other people do, so I wanted to mention it. Um, and then the other thing that I like to do is to immediately layer them while they're still wet so lay down one color and then really quickly layer on another color to blend so as far as color intensity goes I feel like most of the colors were very intense um, and I mean that I guess in a positive way and a negative way so uh, like even the lighter colors I felt like needed to be watered down in order to get a truly light layer as opposed to like if you're using a really light color of a Copic marker it it really is very very light and translucent whereas um, most of the light colors in this set I felt like you really had to do the technique where you dip it in water in order to get it really really nice and light which is what I've done on the the first layer of marker on the fig here that had all been dipped in water and then other than that overall I would say throughout the color range the colors were appropriately intense what I would expect um, I would have enjoyed uh, the inclusion of some neon colors I don't know maybe they would have that in the the larger set the 96 set and then the other thing I felt like I was looking for was just a really nice super intense red the reds were fine but they weren't like especially luminous and I feel like sometimes with with pens and with ink you can get a more luminous red this was just their reds were kind of standard run-of-the-mill red I would say as far as color intensity goes and then for the range of colors the variety of colors available Obviously in a 48 color box, there's a lot of colors, but I felt like there was a lot of color overlap, which is something that I, I 
tend to find in um, more value price materials. So things that aren't necessarily quite as expensive. I feel like they might offer a really big range, but uh, the, the difference in the colors isn't really that noticeable. And that's definitely something I, I found to be true with these. Uh, and then particularly in the greens and the yellows, I felt like in both of those areas, the selection was lacking uh, and I would have liked a more significant variety. So uh, with the greens, one thing I was was really missing was some sort of a, a true kind of juicy leafy green. I felt like they either had really um, kind of grass green, bluey greens, or um, like a more of a, a muted green. Um, and those are both great colors, but there was nothing like, I, I'm thinking, Speaking of in Prismacolor, like apple green or um, something that, that really has the kind of juicy warmth, but is also still like nice and vivid without being um, toned down at all. So uh, the greens were a bit disappointing to me. And then I, I felt like the yellows, there just wasn't a big range, uh, wasn't big range there either. And as I already mentioned in the intensity note, um, I would have liked to have more light colors uh, because even though you can, you can lighten them by blending them with water, that's not my favorite effect. Uh, and I do notice a difference in how they layer if they have have had water in them as opposed to if there's no water. So ideally, I they would have a, a large range of really, really light colors just like Copic does so that you wouldn't have to cut them at all or with water. At least that's how I feel about it. Um, and of course, there is the, the set of 96, which is obviously twice as many colors as 48. So um, maybe that set has more of these things that I'm looking for, more of the different kinds of greens and the lighter colors. So um, that's something to keep in mind too. And as far as a comparison goes, I'm not really a huge marker person, a huge pen person, as you'll know if you watch this channel. I do occasionally use Copics and occasionally use Prismacolor markers. Um, so I don't have tons of things to compare it to. I've never used like a bunch of markers. Um, but the, the closest thing, or I feel like the, the most common comparison probably um, that, that many of you will have worked with are Copic markers. And uh, Copic markers are definitely pretty different. Um, first of all, just in the actual pen themselves. These are, as the name implies, real brush pens. So the tip is actually a brush as opposed to um, on Copic pens where our Copic markers where it does have a brush shape, but it's a felt tip. So it's not like little individual bristles. So with a Copic, I feel like I have to actually apply a decent amount of pressure. Um, with these, it felt much more like painting where you don't really have to apply much pressure. You just kind of move the, move the brush tip. And that was definitely a positive for me. I also felt like they blended more nicely than um, than Copic markers did. Um, I, I'm I use Copics, but I'm not like a huge Copic person. So if you are a Copic fan, I'm not meaning to step on anybody's toes. Copics I know are are a really popular material, but um, but yeah, overall I felt like I did prefer the way that these blended to Copics. Uh, and another positive in my mind was that they didn't bleed through the back of the paper as much as Copic does, and they definitely did not dry out as quick as a Copic does. So um, several of these colors I have already used a ton, and I don't feel like they're drying out at all, which is great uh, because there are no refills available for these. So that's something I will talk about uh, in a couple minutes as well. All right, so uh, some things to keep in mind uh, as you're working with these or if you're thinking about getting them. Um, as I already said, it's an actual brush tip pen. So um, that just means the way that you lay it down is more similar to paint than it is in my mind to a marker. Um, so keep that in mind if you're somebody who likes to use a lot of pressure. And another good thing to keep in mind is that the color of the ink is often different than the color that you see on the pen. So if you can see um, here, there's like the, the top of the pen has a color to it. You can see that kind of like in the, 
the ones that I've got in the lower left hand side there and then on the end of the pen there's a little piece of colored plastic as well um, and I feel like those things are kind of like a rough indication of what you might be able to expect the color to look like but you should definitely 100% you should definitely test it on a little piece of a little swatch of paper before laying it down on your work just because I found that some colors in particular are quite different than uh, than what's shown on the pen and another thing to mention is that some of the lids are a bit kind of loosey-goosey. So um, I had been keeping these in the box, uh, but I've, I've already transitioned to keeping them in like a little tray. And uh, I've noticed a number of times, even if I put the cap on all the way, it's kind of slipped off. So some of them have started to dry out because of that. And uh, then the last thing I wanna mention here is that on certain papers, even like really high quality papers, I've, I've used some, um, some Fabriano watercolor paper, uh, cold press watercolor paper, and on some Reeves BFK. Um, I've noticed that the, uh, that these pens do tend to feather slightly, so they don't really bleed through the back, but if you look close, there's, they don't make a sharp line. They kind of feather out. Um, I hope that makes sense. So that's part of why I am using Bristol board for all of my Inktobers. Um, they don't feather at all on Bristol board. Um, but if you were planning on using them on watercolor paper or on Reeves, the, the uh, printmaking paper that I always recommend, I would definitely keep that in mind that there, there can be some slight feathering. So uh, overall, my conclusion, I feel like they are um, good to use. I'm enjoying using them for this process, but if it comes down to uh, the question of whether I would buy them or not myself, or whether I will buy more when these ones are gone, um, the answer is probably not. And uh, that is mainly because I'm just really not a marker or pen person. Um, I'm enjoying doing it for the Inktober challenge and it's stretching me, but as where I sit right now, from where I sit right now, I don't really see myself um, being a person to, to just use lots of, of markers and pens. Um, and then on that note, I feel like if I were to get into pens, I would uh, definitely want them to be refillable. So uh, that is one of the biggest downsides to these to me is that, uh, that they're not refillable. So I feel like I could actually even get over some of the limitations in the color range because to be honest, that's something that you deal with with almost any media and that's part of the reason why I'm a mixed media artist is because I like certain colors in certain media and I don't like them in others if that makes sense so um, <clears throat> the <clears throat> So the real big negative for me is that um, that these can't be refilled. So uh, as a professional artist, I end up going through certain colors much quicker than others. That's been another reason why I've been um, such a Prismacolor um so committed to Prismacolor pencils is because they're really easy to get open stock and you can get them open stock at a lot of different places. So that's like a key ingredient for me in an art material that I'm going to use a lot because it just doesn't make sense uh, to be, if you're using them really heavily like I do, um, it doesn't make sense to be buying big sets just to replace like five to 10 colors at a time. Um, and then there's of course the environmental impact of that and um, all of the materials that are required to make these that get wasted because they can't be refilled. So um, if Arteza were to um, make a refillable version, I would consider it because um, they are kind of a fun thing to have um, as an alternative to watercolor um, or an alternative to marker. So um, those are my thoughts on the Arteza pens. At this point, you can see I have switched to Prismacolors um, and I'm also going to switch topics. So the other question that you all wanted to hear about was just kind of overall my approach to Inktober. Um, and I feel like I cannot make a video yet about like how to do a challenge because I haven't finished it. Um, but I am already feeling really excited and, and I don't know, maybe even a little proud of myself because... I'll, 
every time in the past I have said I was going to do Inktober, I got like maybe two or three days in and I already was like not able to keep up and I was done with it. So um, we are today, as you're watching this video, on day five and um, I'm still going strong and I feel like part of what... Um, let me do that this year. Part of what made that possible was just that I, I decided to do it in my own way. So in the past I was like, well, okay, I have to do it. If I'm going to do this, I have to do it like according to the exact rules and the parameters. I have to follow the prompts. I have to use only ink. I have to, um, do like, yeah, basically do the really traditional inktober and, um, <laughs> that just was not ever, that wasn't something that really fit within my, uh, the way that I like to work or with my working calendar as a full-time freelancer. So um, this year I decided like first, I knew the first thing that I wanted to do was to be able to come up with my own prompt list rather than following the prompt list um, that the official Inktober site puts out. And that's just because for me, like it's a matter of um, some of it comes down to motivation. And so I knew I wanted to do things that I just always enjoy drawing and I'm always excited to draw. And, uh, that for me is fruits and vegetables. So, uh, that was how I came up with that idea. And then I just, uh, wanted to narrow it down a bit further. Um, if you remember a couple months ago, I was messing around and doing different like test versions. I did some, um, like a Romesco cauliflower. I think I did some tomato and some peppers. I was trying different approaches to Inktober, um, for, I knew I was going to do fruits and vegetables, but I just was like trying out different methods. And, um, I even considered at one point just doing 100% colored pencil because that's what I'm like super comfortable with. And I knew that I wouldn't be able to do like watercolor and colored pencil in 30 minutes because watercolor just takes so long to dry. Um, and I even tried doing hundred percent watercolor as well, uh, which was not <laughs> a success for me. I just, yeah, I, I, maybe someday I'll tackle that in another challenge, but I always end up wanting to add colored pencil. Um, and then I try using some micron pens as well. So I, I tried several different approaches. Um, and then I, I also decided I wanted to constrain it. So just saying fruits and vegetables was like kind of a, a huge overwhelming thing. I thought of doing alphabet, like uh, each letter of the alphabet, but of course that's only 26 letters or 26 um, illustrations. So um, what I ended up coming up with was um, another thing that I always like drawing and that's something that's been cut in half. I'm just really interested in like what's on the inside of things and um, so because of that I really like that um, what is that called? I keep wanting to say cross hatch, uh, cross section, the cross section. So I came up with um, doing cross section fruits and vegetables. And then I thought like, okay, another way I could constrain it again was to make them all round. So you can probably get the theme here. I'm like coming up with an overall idea and then trying to put limitations on it just because I knew I would need those limitations in order to uh, actually complete the challenge um, and have it be something that I could realistically do. So um, after I came, with, came up with the idea of fruits and vegetables and decided that I was going to do cross sections, um, I wanted to do them round just because that would make it... <laughs> easier to draw, to be honest. So I came up with, uh, brainstormed a list of all of the fruits and vegetables that could be cross-sectioned and would like have a roughly round shape when they were cross-sectioned. Um, and I think that was like 40 something fruits and vegetables. And then I narrowed it down to ones that I knew or thought would be okay to do in 30 minutes or less. Um, when I was doing my test pieces, I, I tried an artichoke, um, and I did it definitely quicker than I usually did, but there was no way I could have done that in 30 minutes or less because it was really complex. So, um, came up with the concept, came up with the shapes, and then I came up with this initial list and I narrowed it down to just 31 that I knew would be, um, approachable enough in around 30 minutes, or at least I hoped they would be. Um, and then before I published the list, because you guys had asked me to publish the list and I knew some of you wanted to follow along. So I wasn't just going to be able to like come up with it every day and say, Oh, today I'm doing this one today. I'm doing that one. So I wanted to come up with a specific order. So, um, this is like very, 
I don't know what this is, if this is nerdy or, or what, but I'm going to be honest with you guys and tell you that I like brainstormed, okay, not brainstormed, I imagined like which color is each of these. So like I knew tomato is going to be red, I knew blueberry is going to be blue, and I came up with like a visual order, uh, the way that I would want them to look once they were in my Instagram feed. Um, because even though I'm sharing this content here and I'm also sharing it on Twitter and Facebook, the, my main focus for this project was to have it be something that worked really well on Instagram. So I knew I wanted to have the, um, I, I knew I wanted to have the color tell an interesting story. So once these pieces were all published on my feed, um, I didn't want to have like all of the red ones clustered in one area. Um, and there was a lot of red in, in all of the subjects anyway. So um, I knew I wanted to like be intentional about spacing out some of the red pieces with the green pieces and the purple pieces and the blue pieces. So uh, after I knew which subjects I was doing, I messed around with the order until I felt like it would be a, a good color balance. Um, so that was kind of the groundwork and, um, having all of that in place, I know that that is like part of what's making it possible for me to do this. And, uh, and then the other thing that I have done, and I've been honest with you guys about this, I think I mentioned it in a few different vlogs and some people have already had some very strong opinions <laughs> and that's okay. Um, but I started on some of these before October and, um, that's because because um, number one, as I said, I'm a full-time freelance illustrator and client work, paying client work always has to take precedence. So um, I knew I wasn't going to be able to like 100% do all of these uh, in the month of October because if I had a client come along, I'm not going to be able to say, oh, sorry, I'm, I'm busy with Inktober right now. So um, I just started um, back in September. Actually, I think it was back at the end of August. I started working on a few of these and I would do them here and there in between client projects, just trying to get like a good foundation for myself. And um, the other reason I did that was because even though these are all 30 minute illustrations, which you may think like, oh, that sounds like so quick and easy. And it was like legit only 30 minutes. Um, but I was filming all of these and I wanted, um, yeah, I want, that was something that I wanted to do, uh, for you guys, because a lot of you have mentioned, um, wanting to see more videos on Instagram. And, um, I had never really put time and effort into doing that. So one of the reasons I am doing Inktober at all is because, yeah, I wanted to do a, a fun project for, you guys and something that people could follow along with and that you would enjoy. Um, there isn't really any specific uh, end goal to this project aside from making something that you guys would enjoy and potentially hopefully learn from and that I could learn from. So I felt like the best way to maximize on that was to, to do videos, which to do 30 videos, even if they're all actually 31 videos, even if they're all um, only 30 minutes ish of footage, that's like a pretty huge undertaking. Um, so I knew that I would need to have some of that already as a foundation before, um, before even starting in the month of October. So you're probably getting a theme here that um, a big way that I have approached this is just to do what works for me and, um, you know, to approach the challenge and want to take part in the challenge, but like have my own goals for it. So, um, I knew I wanted to try markers and to stretch myself and to try to do some, um, more quick illustrations, uh, in a slightly different format than I usually do. So I wanted to stretch myself there and then also have a project that was something that was really fun that you guys would all enjoy and maybe be able to participate in, in your own ways. Um, so yeah, having my goals as the forefront, like in, being the main thing that I was measuring this by as opposed to being like, I have to do it like the exact traditional way that, um, that Inktober has always been done. And on that note, you know, feeling free to, to use things that were not ink. So, um, I think there was a part of me that was like, Oh, I really want to do only markers because I know some people are going to say mean things to me if I do, uh, colored pencils as well as markers. And you know what? I just am trying to let that go. And the, the few people that have said negative things, you know what? That's okay. You can have your thoughts and you can do Inktober the way that you want to do it. But, um, I, I think, 
my big takeaway for enjoying a challenge like this and hopefully for finishing it is to to do what works for you even if that goes outside of the boundaries of the challenge so um, there were the original constraints and guidelines that went with the original Inktober and that is awesome for folks who want to take that on but I came up with my own goals and my own constraints and uh, and decided to to use my own methods to uh, to make the challenge work for me. So as I said, I haven't finished it yet. Um, I definitely still uh, have further to go as this is only day five, um, but um, I'm planning on continuing to publish a new video each day on Instagram and if it'll be the video and then if you swipe, you'll get the still shot of the, of the finished piece. And um, I'm also trying to decide um, if and when I, I do finish, I would love to have like some sort of, I don't know whether like I'll do a sheet of stickers or a poster or what. Um, I am gonna be auctioning off all of the originals on November 1st. Um, and I'll have information about that in the description box. And I'm sure I'll be talking about it more in, um, in the coming weeks in some more videos. But uh, yeah, so the originals will all be auctioned off on November 1st. Um, but, uh, I was trying to think of a way that I could like put them all together in one piece too. So I don't know, like a, a sticker sheet or poster or something, but let me know if you have any ideas or if there is a particular, um, piece of material, merchandise, whatever that you would be interested in seeing them on. Um, yeah. And I'm, I'm just wrapping up here. Um, I'm doing the final highlights with, um, Dr. PH Martin's plead proof white. Uh, I had started trying and you can see like down on the right hand side, I, I experimented with some Sharpie paint pens and I did still use some of them in some parts, but, um, the, I really like the bleed proof white and I'm getting into it more in this project because I can use like a super, super fine tip brush and get just like really wispy little tiny highlights. And because these things are all fairly small, like none of these pieces, they're all under four inches. Having small highlights is like really important in order to avoid keeping them like in order to avoid making them look like a cartoon, which isn't bad if you want to do that, but I was still aiming for some kind of realism. So um, yeah, I'm really liking the bleed proof white for the, the super fine highlights. Okay, so that's it. That is what it looks like to have a 30 minute real time video of my process for my Inktober illustrations. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Uh, if you have, please do let me know by hitting the thumbs up and leaving a comment. And if you're new, don't forget to subscribe and turn on the bell to receive notifications. And another great way to support this channel if you're up for it is to share the content with your friends by posting on social media and linking back to the channel. And as always, please do let me know in the comments if you have questions or ideas for new videos. And thank you again to my patrons and to all of you for watching. I hope you have a great week and I will see you in the next video.